Falchagu Yeo Scott's The Celtic Podcast. Kimra Ha Huladunya, how is everyone? On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gallic, that's Let's Try Little Gallic. Beginner's Gallic Course 2. In Celtic history, the Tommy Knockers. In everyday Celtic ways, the Scottish Highland Games and the Caber. And we'll hear music from Anna McDonald, Natalie Clark, Jamie McGeekin, a.k.a. Little Fire, and Chris Andriucci, which sounds Italian, but trust me, if you heard him, you know he's Scottish. And all of these brilliant musicians are from Scotland, and they began their trade there. And all of but one is living here in the United States now. Uh, today we are promoting our Celtic musicians and the various genres their music appear. So enjoy! I knew you all from Scotland, and now here we all are, working, living in the USA. Wow. Like As always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to start us off. What is the ball in the sport of hurling called? Alright. Check out the E.L. Scott Facebook group where you can be a part of the Celtic culture. And keep an eye out for all the different videos our YouTube channel and Facebook group have to offer. Kershmaha, let's kick this thing off. Get is Glina Kanla by Anna McDonald. An interesting aspect of the role of women during the period of this song is the attitude towards extramarital relationships and illegitimacy. In Upper Gallic society, most marriages were mere arrangements. Love had little to do with it. Many Gallic songs lament of these heartaches, these kinds of marriages caused, and Geddes, Grianach, and La, Sunny Through the Day May Be, is one of these. This is about the daughter of the MacLeod of Dunvegan who has to leave behind the man she loves and return to her husband. Women of the time had little or no say in the decisions which would affect their future happiness. They ended up being pawns in their husband's and father's affairs, having to find love when and where they could find it. It's kind of sad, but at least they found it. Now remember, Gaelic's at the top, English is at the bottom. Get ready. Oh, 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 oh,
Scottish Gaelic is native to the Gales of Scotland. Scottish Gaelic developed out of the Old Irish, and learning this beautiful language can be a direct link to your Gaelic ancestors. Follow along in Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, and like I said, let's try a little Gaelic. Falchagu ye old Scots, the beginner's Gaelic course. Kimraha Huladunya, how is everyone? Looky there, you already know how to say welcome to and how is everyone. Alright, in the next 25 lessons um, of Fekimich Beckham Gaelic, that's Let's Try a Little Gaelic, um, with a little work you can gain a rudimentary understanding of the Scottish Gaelic language. Now, these lessons were taken from my weekly podcast beginning back on May 15th of 2020. So if you like, you can listen to them or there as well. But please remember that I am not an authority on the Gaelic language. I just love learning it. I struggle like most all learners. And so what I teach comes right from well-respected Gaelic teachers. I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. And as always, I display on the screen what I'm discussing so you can follow along. All right, Kersh Maha, which means, all right then, let's get started. We're still in that 25 part Gallic lesson. This is part two. And uh, as always, I will display what I am talking about on the screen. So, today, lesson two the present tense of the verb to be. Now, like all verbs in Gallic, there is only one form for all persons. For a positive statement in the present tense, this is ha. Just add the subject to it, either a pronoun or a noun. Now this gives you the basis on sentence structure, verb, subject, everything else. Pronouns are combined with the verb ha as follows. Ha me, I am. Ha u, you are. Ha a, he is. Ha e, she is. Ha shin, we are. Ha shiv, you are, the plural form. And ha it, they are. Now, there are two ways to say you in Gaelic. U for singular usage, and shiv, you, for formal usage, showing respect or if you don't know the person or you are talking to. Um, and plural usage for speaking to more than one person, of course. Now, um, adjectives can be used following the verb to be. The adjective is the same for all subjects. So, the feminine subject, ha i fur, she is cold. The plural subject, ha it fur, they are cold. And the masculine subject, ha kalum fur, kalum is cold. Vocabulary, adjectives, are words that are used to describe or modify nouns or pronouns. For example, Nice, big, happy, and mean are adjectives because they describe things. A nice hat, a big rabbit, a happy duck, a mean person. Say, so I'm going to whip through these real quick. Ma is good. Dona is bad. Ski is tired. Blah is warm. Now watch out for those little marks over the, the vowels. You'll learn, you'll learn about broad and slender vowels here in a later lesson. Just know that uh, mark means that you give it a little bit of a of a broad pronunciation. Che is hot, fur is cold, snuck is nice, more is big, beck is small, chin is sick, luck is weak, lecher is strong, brilia is beautiful, toilet che is happy, Bronach is sad, Fluke is wet, Chirlum is dry, Spiachuk is mean, and Granda is ugly. Now an adverb is a word used to modify a verb, an adjective or another adverb. For example, is she swims extremely quickly now that extremely modifies the adjective quick. Now, I'm sorry, I messed that up a little bit. Glay is very, equals very, means very. A glay is a very important, helpful word, but it lenites the next word. So lenition 
is the softening of the next word by placing an H in the second position. For example, Gleva, very good. Glehona, very bad. But watch out because not every word gets this special treatment. Gleski, very tired. Gleisnok, very nice. And Gleilak, very weak. All right. You're going to you see, you'll see more on lenition later on. But uh, there's a practice, I got some practice translation for you to do. Um, number one, Hami Ski. Number two, Ha Iet Fur. Number three, Ha I Fluke. Number four, Ha Shen Fur. Number five, Hashiv Snook. Number six, Hami Gleva. And that's it. Caledonia, you're 
calling me Never I'm going home But if I should become a stranger You know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia's been everything I've ever had Caledonia's been everything I've ever had Celtic History brings you the tales of the land, castles, warriors, heroes, legends, and customs that have created the rich, vibrant, and sometimes strange and wonderful history of the Celtic world. The Fairies of the Cornish Tin Mines Or the Tommy Knockers The Tin Mines of Cornwall have an ancient history that extends back to the mists of time. Cornish trade links with the Phoenicians and the Carthaginians, which predate the arrival of the Romans in Britain, all of which is documented by Greek historians. Around 2500 BC, trade started growing in tin and copper with these foreign traders exchanging bronze tools and gold ornaments for the minerals. Now, fairy faith and folklore has enjoyed a central role in the foundation and development of Celtic culture and Celtic Cornwall has many myths and legends involving fairies which include a particularly Cornish fairy of the tin mines. The strange subterranean residents of Cornish mines are known by various names, but one of the most common being Tommy Knockers. Over the centuries, the legends surrounding these creatures became embedded in the folklore and fairy faith of the Celtic miners to a remarkable degree. Now these folkloric traditions then followed the Cornish immigrants as they fanned out working mines all around the world. Now, strange knockings were sometimes heard on mine shaft walls. Nobody appeared after the unearthly rapping for the invisible knockers were the ghost of long dead miners. The knockers were not dangerous but helpful. Their knocking grew louder when they, uh, miners came near a rich vein of ore or were in danger. Now, they were private creatures who did not appreciate being spied upon. One man who did so, by the name of Barker, managed to learn the fairy language sufficiently to hear them express their annoyance of his presence, and then their plan to leave their fairy tools on his knee. Hence the Cornish proverb, stiff as a Barker's knee. In my sources, a pattern emerges of the knocker as a mostly benevolent being, but prone to a short fuse, attributed to all fairies, really, when vexed by humans. Now sometimes the Tommy knockers would warn the miners of an impending mine collapse. The notion that knockers acted as protectors of the mines were instrumental in, to their safety as an integral part of the folklore of the uh, immigrant mining community in California that sprang up around the gold rush which resulted in a startling legal action connected with a 1956 mine closure. Now. The county, uh, California County of El Dorado has posted on their webpage a history of the success of Cornish miners in the area of the state and the origin of the term Cousin Jack and a tribute to the enduring legacy of the fairies of the mines. The Cornish miners, succed, uh, Cornish miners sudden success encouraged mine owners to ask if they knew of anyone back home with mining experience who'd be interested in coming to work in the California mines. And the common answer among the Cornish was, well, my cousin Jack over in Cornwall would, uh, would come over if he just pay his boat ride. So many Cornish miners made their way to California this way. Now, that it wasn't long before the Americans had taken to calling pretty much all of them Cousin Jacks. The Cornish miners were highly respected and sought after, making them the authority in many uh, Northern California mines. As they educated many on mining, they also inadvertently introduced the Tommy Knockers to California. This is part of Cornish legend and lore, which still survives today in our own mining culture and history. Now, to Cousin Jacks, the Tommy Knockers were no less important than their own tools of the trade. The Cousin Jacks would refuse to enter any mine until the mining company assured them the Tommy Knockers were on duty. 
In time, mine owners gave way to the custom as simply as a matter of doing business with the Cornish. If someone's hammer was missing, well, it was the Tommy Knockers. If a cousin Jack got out just before the tunnel failed, well, you can bet it was the Tommy Knockers. In 1956, California's mining industry came to a grinding halt. Devout believers, mostly Cornish, of course, lobbied the general manager of one particular California's largest and oldest mines to release the Tommy Knockers from employment in order so they could be transferred to a, another of the working mines in the area to work on California's mother load. And the mining company agreed. Wow. That's 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 pretty that's some definitely belief belief in a legend right there. those that are Celtic and those that just love the Celtic world. stood up in front of you. This is the crucial part of this. It's called the pick. A good pick 
is key to success of the entire caber toss. Once you've picked the caber, gaining balance, get, keeping the caber tucked in between your shoulder and your head, once you've gained balance, then it's time for the, for the run. The reason why we run is to get some forward momentum on the caber so that when we put all we got into it to turn it, that forward momentum will keep it going and turning over. Notice the judge standing right behind the athlete. Now he's the one who decides after your caper has turned what your score is based on a clock face. 12 o'clock being perfect all the way to 3 o'clock or over to 9 o'clock. And once you see that caper break 90 degrees and fall to the ground, you're happy as can be. This particular caper, 17 and a half feet long, 125 pounds. Here's a couple examples of a perfect caper toss. Now that's how it's done.
could get it on If we could come again I feel something I feel something That I cannot forget I feel something Deep within I feel something, I feel something That I cannot forgive I feel something deep within Just feel no regret Black, black magic, baby Black magic, black, black magic, baby Black magic, black, black magic, baby Black magic, black, black magic, baby Black, black magic, baby Black magic, black, black magic, baby Black magic, black, black magic, baby Black magic, black, black magic, baby Now remember to check out my YouTube channel. It's got Celtic music, podcasts, Gallic language, Gallic song, Celtic history videos, plus lots more. And my Facebook group where you can give me your inputs and insights on all things Celtic. But before I let you go, the trivia question answer. The Slyatar. Martian leaving Drasda. Bye for now. But I'm going to let you go with a song. Don't I hear it raining? It's dancing on my window pane. It's just the same as yesterday. I thought I saw you pass in my place, and I remember that you've gone. Cause you moved on, and I go drive late at night. Through these empty streets I ride I've got nothing left to show here on my own Way out past the city limit sign Is where you'll find this house of mine A little street in the dark Nothing there but a broken heart If you're looking nine hard to find Take a left at the welcome sign There's no one else, just me In a town called Misery I take a walk to clear my mind on Sundays And through these lonesome streets I roam How can I call this home? Way out past the city limit sign Is where you'll find this house of mine A little street in the dark and Nothing there but a broken heart If you're looking nine hard to find Just take a left at the welcome sign There's no one else, just me In a town called Misery 
close the curtains, lock the door What's the point in living for anymore? Way out past the city limit sign It's where you find this house of mine A little street in the dark Nothing there but a broken heart If you're looking nine hard I find Just take a left at the welcome sign There's no one else, just me In a town called misery There's no one else, just me In a town called misery